On January 1st, I made a choice. I decided I was tired of not writing. I was tired of making excuses for not writing. I was tired of telling other writers almost on a daily basis that not writing was bad, all the while barely writing anything myself. I was tired of not making progress, of not telling stories, of not practicing what I preached, so I decided to create a challenge for myself. And the challenge actually had to be challenging, like, I couldn't just challenge myself to write a book because I'd written a lot of them before and that just wouldn't have been enough. I needed something more, so I decided I was going to write more. A lot more. One million words in 365 days, to be exact, and everything started off strong. For like, a day. I quickly fell behind. Way behind. It got to the point where I almost considered quitting only two months in because I was thousands upon thousands of words behind my goal and I honestly couldn't ever imagine myself catching up. And then March happened. There is nothing special about March, it isn't dusted with some kind of magic pixie dust or something like that, but it took until then for something in my brain to finally click. And click it did. I wrote. I wrote more than I thought was possible to write. I wrote at times of day I had always said I couldn't write during. I wrote things that made me uncomfortable. I wrote things that made me happy. I treated writing like work and like a hobby. A weird hybrid of chore and joy I'm now convinced it takes most writers a long time to figure out on their own. Like years. I took risks. I went big. And even though I was convinced that by the end of the month I would have completely burned myself out, I have no desire to slow down. 31 days. That was all it took for everything to change. 104,000 words later, I have learned something I did not expect to learn in 2019, that you can push yourself without burning out. You can do the things you need to do without giving up the things you want to do. You can do so much more than you believe you are capable of. Because most of us are bred to believe the limitations placed on us. We aren't taught to challenge them, we're taught to accept them. The only way to venture beyond those limits is to step over the imaginary line and stroll straight into the unknown. That's right, the limit does not in fact exist, at least not the one you've been telling yourself existed all along. Though I can't yet bring myself to make it a daily habit, the few mornings I was able to rise early enough to begin writing at 5 a.m were some of the most productive days I had overall. Not just writing-wise, but in all aspects of my life. Similarly, the nights I stayed up several hours past my bedtime, I had the most restful sleep I had had in weeks. Writing has as much of an influence as my well-being as rest, calories, and caffeine. Yes, coffee is good for you, don't take away my chemically induced sense of purpose. Time and again, I rediscover how important writing is to my health and productivity. Last month, I couldn't figure out if I wrote less because I felt terrible or felt terrible because I wrote less. And I think the answer was a little bit of both. For me, the more I write, the more fulfilled I feel, and the more fulfilled I feel, the more I'm motivated to write. It's the best kind of cycle, reminding me day in and day out that I write because it is the thing that makes me feel good. And I feel good when I have done the thing that makes me feel good. And no matter what might try to stand in my way, there is always a way around it. And the benefits that come with writing are always worth finding the detour that makes the obstacle obsolete. This month, if anything, proved that at least I can do the things I've convinced myself I can't. Barriers will always be there. Distractions will always be there. Needy puppies will always be there. But writing can happen anyway, and for me, it will. It can for you too, if you sit down and do the work. If you block out the false beliefs that say you can't and prove, even if just to yourself, that you can. I am not caught up to my goal. I won't be for a while. I am still behind. If you want to take it further, I am by definition failing. But it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel like I'm falling short of my own expectations because I'm not letting myself focus on that. Instead, I'm focusing on how far I've come and how far I still want to go. In January, I made a choice. I decided to write to make writing a challenge. But in choosing this path, I've also decided to grow. There is nothing that defines a good writer more than a willingness to grow beyond everything they have done before in search of purpose, in search of meaning, 
in search of stories they didn't even realize they were capable of telling. If I was able to learn this much about myself as a writer in a single quarter of a much longer length of time, I can't wait to find out what the other three quarters have in store for me. Until then, write on. Write bravely, write with purpose. Write because it is, always has been, and always will be who you are. Can you say hello? Can you say, I'm the reason my mama doesn't get to write as much. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a very good hello. That was a very, very good hello. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, don't bite the camera. That's not nice. Oh my god. I love you.